Sunrise Township is served by two different phone companies. One is CenturyLink, and the other one is Frontier. So we cannot tax the whole township of Sunrise to pay for the customers of CenturyLink only to get broadband. So that means what we need to have, and that Mr. Ellers is from the bonding company, we need uh, a general obligation subordinate service district bond pursuant to Minnesota statute chapter 475 and sections 365 alpha dot zero one to 365 alpha dot one zero. Subordinate district service bonds can be general obligation bond issued without an election and are not subject to net debt. The subordinated service district is defined as an area within a town, and township is also called a town, in which one or more government services or additions to township-wide services are provided by the town specifically for the area and financed from revenues from that area. It would provide the town a means by which it could capture revenues specifically from the district in the form of property tax or service charge, net revenues and special assessments, or a combination of each to the payment of the bonds. The process would require the following. First thing is a petition, and I think I circulated a form. An inter internet petition is not a legal petition. And we need a petition. I've circulated that form. You guys can look it up on the internet too for what has to be on that petition form. A petition signed by at least 50% of the property owners. It's not both a husband and a wife. It's a one vote for each property owner, not your kids, not anything else. It's 50% of the property owners. There are approximately 432 families, I think, in the area. Is that correct? 532. 532. Okay. That means you have to have half that number, more than half that number, on the petition. And you bring that petition to Sunrise Township. Our Sunrise clerk then has to go through it, make sure that you are in this subordinate service district and check it off so we know who you are, where you live, and you're eligible to vote on this. Uh, then a public hearing within 30 days following the verification of the petition, board approval by resolution within 30 days after the public hearing, publication of the authorizing resolution and mailed notice to each owner of each parcel within the district within 20 days after its passage. The district began 60 days after publication or a later date as specified in the resolution, subject to a reverse resolution, which only takes 25% of the property owners uh, in the district before effective date of the state. Um, there's been lots of uh, misinformation out there. We as a board are not against this. And whoever distributed this, the mailboxes in the area, it's a federal offense to put anything in somebody's mailbox. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. But that is against the law. There must be a lot of outlaws in the area. There are. <laughs> there are. And so... We, I have had people call me left and right about, about these things going in their mailbox and saying that it's a federal offense. They do not like people messing with their mailboxes. I've had a lot of people call me on that. Yeah. You can put them in a paper box if people have a paper box out there, but it is against the federal law to put that in the post office box. Okay. Uh, you say it's inaccurate information? Yes, it's inaccurate in information here. Uh, it says the town board is against it. We are not against it. We need a petition from you guys in order to go through this process or we can't do it. So when we get that petition, <coughs> then we will do it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, on the meeting in July, you stated you were going to send out a flyer. The board passed that motion to inform all of us residents that this was even an option and even available. Okay. You dropped the ball, did not come through with oh, that. Wait a minute. And some of the responsible residents actually informed the rest of the community because you did not. Okay, at that time we did not have any of this information. Part of this information we just received last Thursday, or a week ago Thursday. And we've never had a, a bond issue before in Sunrise Township. It is up to the citizens of Sunrise Township to give us a petition. We have nothing to do with the petition until you submit it to us. 
You asked for the petition last Friday after hours to Bruce Hampton, who's organizing this fall. That's fine. That's when I got the information, and that's when I sent it to Bruce Hampton. So why you still haven't explained why the flyer was never sent out? It took you over two months to okay. figure out. Just, Can I just make a statement too? Sure. Pete and Eric have put lots of time into this. Yes, when we are working at a township level, they have gone to they have gone to meetings. It takes time. Nancy is not available for to meet with us every day. Neither is Todd. Neither are any of these people. CenturyLink has taken a long time. We couldn't get any information if we didn't have numbers. Yes. And they've been working on that. So I think they should be actually thanked for all the time that they have spent on this. They for not informing the entire community that we should thank them? We well, didn't have we anything to inform you of. That there is even an option of this. We didn't know that either. And you were informed July. months ago, months ago, by Shane Step and that's Bruce. true. But months. we did not receive any information. Bruce Hampton was receiving information from CenturyLink. He should have known the process to do this. Thing, and he gave, he gave that. you the information, and you refused it. What what information? The information that this was available to our community months ago. March. Look, we don't deal with Bruce Hampton. We deal with the principal. We deal with Ellers. We deal with the uh, EDA, and we deal with Century. Be dealing with the information and looking it, into it instead of just passing it off and saying, "I'll wait until it comes to me." Was no. there a July or August well, meeting with Ellers? Say again. Was there a July or August meeting with Ellers? No, we found a lawyer with Ellers. No, 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 because that's, we didn't know what we needed to get started. That, that's the point that I would like to make. Is yeah, if there was a meeting about this in July. This is the first I heard of it when I got the notice in my paper box last okay. night. How, how are the citizens supposed to find out about this if the board isn't going to inform anybody that this is even an option in our community? And they were asked to, and they said they would. And they we didn't. said we would hold a meeting, an informational meeting, but we did not have the information. That's what I'm telling you. And this is what has to happen. You guys, whoever's well, doing this petition I think online. We should wait until at the very end when all the information is gathered, I think that the citizens should know this is actually possibly in the works exactly. and get everybody together so we can, you know, put our opinions in Nancy there. told you it was, it, something was available and that this was an option months ago, correct? No, not correct. And up against the deadline. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, the other thing, let me tell you this. Nancy is going on with the application for the grant, for the deed grant. There's, there's... CenturyLink has already committed to running the fiber uh, line to near Shane Step. Uh, they're putting that line in, and I guess, I think Nancy said that's going to affect about 220 homeowners that will be able to hook up on that line. Isn't that? <coughs> she added three. Like, oh, there's, yeah, there's, there's, I'm here. I apologize. I'm late. Good. You know when you want me to. Okay. How many people are we going to be able to serve <laughs> off the, the fiber spine? If you want to come up to the front here. So this is my name is Kirsten Sursland. I'm director of local government affairs. I'm with CenturyLink. Um, so I'm here in, in an advisory capacity. I'm not. Um, I'm not here to influence decisions one way or another. I'm, I'm merely advisory. So, um, Mr. Chair, what would your actually? Eric, yeah, we're, we're just. Asking for a number of people that were going to be involved um, on the, the spine that's going into the park. So the the spine that's going into the park. I apologize. I don't have the the separate numbers with me. What I what I learned. Um, I had an extensive conversation with our network engineering uh, person today before I came up here, and what I learned was our our calf dollars. So Connect America <coughs> funds. We have federal funds. We have fifty six million dollars per year for the next six years to invest in underserved and unserved, um, mostly rural areas in the state of Minnesota. Uh, Sunrise Township qualifies as a CAF eligible area. So we looked at the Sunrise Township build and we had it scheduled for 2017. Um, and that was going to make uh, the entire portion of Sunrise that CenturyLink serves. So we don't serve the entire township. There's a portion that only Frontier serves. Um, when we went in and did our calf build in 2017, everyone in Sunrise would be eligible for at least 10 down and one up, 10 meg down, 10 meg up. So if you live at the furthest, we're, we're putting fiber to the nodes, we're putting nodes further into the unserved and underserved areas, that makes your copper work faster. Um, so everyone in the township of Sunrise that CenturyLink serves will be able to get at least 10 meg. That's when the 2017 build um, is finished. 
we were approached earlier this year by Nancy and some businesses, and we moved that piece of the 2017 build into 2016. So it's, it's, it's actually two builds. So rather than be in 2017, we need one piece that goes up um, from Checkerboard Park and ends at a node close to Mr. Stepp's manufacturing company. And that will, if you're close to the node, you'll get 60, 80, possibly 100 meg of service. If you're further from the node, um, you will get at least 10. This is all scalable. So as, as we're building, as we're putting this fiber in um, this year up towards, up towards Shane's place, every 600 feet or so, we're coiling um, fiber, and it's there, and it's in, it's in a little pot, so it's not going to look like a fence post, but every 600, 650 feet or so. So the fiber is there, so that at some point, um, we could do fiber to every home, should, you know, should this not go forward. Um, so we're making it, it is, it is scalable, it will be um, easier for us at some point in time to come in and connect those coils of fiber that we have um, every 600 feet. 2017, that will be the northern part of Sunrise Township, and that will complete the build. So when we're finished in 2017, every resident in Sunrise Township should be eligible for at least 10 down um, and one up, and it is scalable um, it, as as the future as the future goes up, as the future goes up, you know what I mean, right? We got it. Thank you. I'm sorry. As the future draws near. Thank you. As, right as we go, as we go. All right. Forward. Um, if this does go through, and I think we've got some, I think we've got some different numbers. When we originally came with um, with the numbers, we modeled it off of some other fiber to the home builds that we had done in the past. With CAF being in play, what CAF is doing is it's bringing fiber to the nodes um, closer to Sunrise Township, so we don't have to do those. So we're starting with um, some we're starting with some pretty solid infrastructure already in place. So our cost came down significantly I, from the first time that we met. I think when we met, we were looking at a 1.2 million dollar bond, and now we're looking at something less than 500 thousand um, dollars. So, so we're looking, you know, we're looking at a half a million dollars to um, the city, I'm sorry, we, the township of Sunrise is looking at investing a half a million dollars into this bond, partnering with CenturyLink, contingent upon receiving the border-to-border -border grant to provide fiber to the home to every home in Sunrise Township that would like it. If you don't want fiber to the home, you don't have to say yes. You don't you have to keep subscribe saying to it. To every home, but then earlier you mentioned that only the this is the only of the Century Link area, area, not in Frontier. Yeah, Frontier is a whole different animal. Yeah, we don't have any control over that. We don't serve the Frontier area. It's um, you know when the bells broke up, Frontier got that piece. We got this piece. You know it was a it was a bad divorce. So, um, so that's I think that's a pretty. Pretty oversimplified but comprehensive um, overview. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes, I think it was. Okay. So, uh, what are you doing regardless of the bond, and what are you doing, and what would you be doing that's contingent kind of bond? Regardless of the bond, we are doing a fiber to the node build, um, and it will it will encompass the entire. Township of Sunrise. One build goes up to a node um, near Shane Stepp's place. One node is in the northern piece of Sunrise. That's not going to be completed until next year. So next construction year, which means, you know, 18 months from now. Um, and that will affect every home that we serve in Sunrise Township, at least 10 meg down, one up. Um, if you're closer to that node. So it's, you know, it's, it's like playing the game of telephone, right? The further you get from that node where the power is, the more your service will um, your speeds will decline, um, but it, but again, scalable. So the more money you know, the more money we can put into it at a later time when demand is greater, then your speeds go up. And the reason for that is because it's copper or something going so out. We're feeding, you lose the signal yep, as you go. Yep. Out. So we feed we feed fiber to the node, and then from the node, it's copper loops to the residents. So what is the bond money paying for? That? So the bond money, it's a it's a three prong approach. So we're putting in we're putting in that fiber to the node with cap dollars. We're going to ask the state of Minnesota for a piece of the broadband grant. They've set aside thirty million dollars for unserved and underserved areas for the state of Minnesota. It's in a big pot. If if you want it, come ask for it. Um, so we're going to ask them for that money that the legislature has set aside. 
there is that the first year that the legislature um, appropriated this money, it was $20 million. Last year, it was $10 million. It's, it's highly political. It's used often as a, a very partisan pawn. This year, it's $30 million. There is no guarantee that this money will be there next year. Um, it's, very, uh, it's very fluid. It depends on a lot of politics. There's, there's a lot of moving parts. So there's $30 million in there right now. It's, it's kind of a sweet spot between um, our CenturyLink's funds, um, the willingness of a local municipality to put money in the pot, and the willingness and, and, the, and the strength of the grant. With the local match, the strength of the grant rises exponentially. Um, without the local match, you're, you're the only, um, there, there might be one or two others, but Sunrise Township is truly the only grant that we're putting a whole lot of time, effort, and energy into because there's this potential of a local match. There are lots of areas that even with our CAF dollars, um, the applying for a broadband grant, it's the proportions don't match. They won't pay more than 50%. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I got off on I got off on a tangent. So what the what the money does? What the whole what the big pot does is it brings fiber to the home to every home in Sunrise Township that CenturyLink serves. To the home. To the home. I thought I thought that from the node the the that's without that's without the grant. That's without the grant without the bond. You will have fiber instead of with the grant fiber. and with the bond. You have fiber to your home, which enables you to receive speeds of up to a gig. Yeah, so yeah, speed yeah. is virtually unlimited. So without the bond, we can all get to yes. next service. Yes. With the bond, we can get to higher speeds. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought there were homes that would not be served within the five years. Streaming video. So we're getting more new information now. I apologize. I, this, is, this, is the, this is the perils of dealing with the um, political person and not the network person. Um, in, in talking to my, you know, as, as we vet this and as we have more meetings about these broadband things, um, I understand more and more. So I did get, I called my network guy today and said, what's the final number? If we, if we don't get the bond, what's the final number? He said, the number's the same, Kirsten. It's, <laughs> so you mean, he's, the number's the same. So it's, it's everyone. It is. Okay. It is. So basically, if we don't get the bond, we all get 10 men. If we get the bond, we can get up to a gig now. In the century link here. In the century link here. So long time. Right, go ahead. Okay. We've all bought into speeds up to with our satellite connections and all that. <laughs> Sunday nights, you're lucky to hit a night. Yeah. So the family that is trying to get their homework done on Sunday night and they're 5,200 feet from the node getting copper, when the bandwidth's heavy, what pretty, will how dramatically will, will it be slowed down when there's a lot of traffic? We promise up to 10 meg. So it will be. Are you bringing? I'm, I'm not. A, uh, okay. Go ahead, Mr. Staff. Okay. Are you bringing more than one fiber into the north part of the country, uh, the township? So, in other words, the center section would be less served. I won't say underserved, but less served because they're further away. Is it one line? So you have one on the south, one on the north. Is that what I'm understanding? Without the bond and without the grant, with just our calf build, yes, there will be one fiber line here, one fiber line here. This one goes to your place, this one goes there, and the rest runs on the spot. With the grant and the and the bond, uh, with you know, with the whole enchilada, there will be lots more fiber. We'll be able to do. Um, it looks kind of like a spider web. Enchilada is a communications term. Thank you. <laughs> That's a new one to me. I've been doing it for 15 years. <laughs> so, now with County Road 9, don't block that, would you? We have the Enchilada. It's really on one side, and the Frontier on the other. Yep. So, it's going to be awfully interesting. Who's your telephone company? It is sadly Frontier. Okay. This doesn't affect you. <laughs> yep. He's across the road. Go so ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just a question. Now, with that old node going in up to your time, will you not, were you planning on running new twisted pair down to where the pipes are through the existing pedestal, or are you going to reuse the existing one? 
I, I, I do have very slow speed for the uh, at the end of second session. Last night it was like 0.37 megabits per second down. You're very very slow. Uh, no, uh, I don't believe we plan to replace the copper. Don't quote me on that. I haven't heard in, in my meetings. I haven't heard anything about that, so I, I don't believe that that's the plan. Yeah, I've never, I've never received 1.5 in the target of 1.2, but it was 0.37 megabits per second. I couldn't have been using the internet at all, and it just keeps dropping. So we're kind of there. Really since the two-way technology is the only thing that's connected to the internet, it's hard to forecast. <laughs>